Hey guys, it's Dolores. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I just wanted to show you guys a really, really, really quick and easy Greek meal that I like to make for my family. Um, the first thing that I'm going to be making is Greek potatoes. Now, you guys, usually I would make these in the slow cooker and then just go about my business um, and come back a couple hours later and, you know, they're nice and soft and done. But somehow, someway, y'all, the slow cooker lid done got broke and uh, I'm not even about to fool with it. <laughs> so I decided to make these in the oven instead. Um, I had actually just gotten done shooting um, footage for something else. And so it was already late and, and you know, my other shooting went over longer than I wanted it to. So I'm like, let me just go ahead and throw these in the oven. That way I can still go about my life and edit my other footage. So now I am using gold potatoes. And while it is up to you which potatoes you use for this, I absolutely recommend using gold potatoes. That is what what Greeks use when they make Greek potatoes um, to me they're a, a creamier potato um, I feel like they just taste better in general like honestly I don't use rusted potatoes unless I'm trying to make fries or something like that um, you can use the little baby potatoes and that actually would cook a lot faster as well but since I thought I would have more time than I did I just went ahead and bought the big ones so um, all I'm gonna do is cut these into little cubes now normally I don't cut these in cubes normally I cut them in wedges just like you saw me make that one um, horizontal cut like that I would literally just leave them like that um, but you know in my head i feel like if you cut them in cubes smaller cubes they cook faster so i only had about an hour and a half to cook this meal um and majority of everything is going in the oven so i just wanted to get this cut as small as possible that way it doesn't take me as long now i did originally have eight potatoes but um after i cut up six of them as you guys will see that was actually a lot and it's just the three of us so I didn't want to go overboard um it was also late so i knew that my mom wasn't going to eat a lot of potatoes tommy was darn near sleep y'all and i <laughs> really shouldn't be eating too too many potatoes especially since my other dish is going to be a starch um but that is what six golden potatoes look like so y'all can see that that is actually quite a bit um now i'm trying to like just brainstorm and see you know do i need a bigger uh, pan and really i should have had a bigger pan but I wasn't about to dirty up nothing else so um, I'm just going in with a little bit of olive oil and that's essential you cannot use canola oil for this you need to use olive oil um, I'm adding some seasoned salt some parsley um, I'm also gonna be adding a little bit of paprika sweet paprika as you guys know the one I got from world market I'm gonna be going in with some garlic powder y'all know I love that um, I'm also going to be going in with some ground oregano now that was actually a mistake tommy was going to the store to get me some oregano and i don't know if he picked the wrong one or if they didn't have any of the um like whole like herb dried oregano left but the ground oregano will have to do because i was out of it and actually i didn't notice a difference um it was definitely strong so you can't use as much as you will with the dried oregano but it still worked now i love black pepper so I was using some black pepper and sorry y'all if you hear Tommy snoring in the background because I'm I didn't meant to uh, <laughs> do this voiceover right after I finished cooking but I forgot. So now I'm upstairs and I'm trying to hurry up and get this put up so you guys can see this awesome recipe and how it turned out. Now anyways. Of course, y'all know I love garlic, so I'm adding some minced garlic to this. Um, you don't have to add a lot. I love minced garlic and all the little garlic pieces. Sometimes my mom doesn't, so that's why I didn't use too much. But now... All you're going to do is, if you want to stir it right now, you can. But honestly, this is not one of those recipes where your seasonings are going to stick to your potatoes. Because um, I'm actually about to, like, just douse this in liquid. So I'm not even going to sit here and, you know, try to go out of my way to, like, stir this right now. Um, and if you see me cutting something on the side, y'all, I honestly don't even know what I was cutting. <laughs> like, this is why I had to, like, edit my videos closer to when I filmed them. Because I'm over here like, what am I doing? Oh, it's cutting lemons. Surprise. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, y'all. This is, like, a major key for Greek potatoes. You absolutely need lemons. Now, how much lemon you add is completely up to you. But I'm using three big woody lemons. And I totally suggest that you do the same. Um, 
they're called Greek lemon potatoes for a reason or Greek potatoes. But people know that, you know, the main ingredient is lemon and oregano, you guys. So um, if you don't have big lemons and maybe you'll have to use like uh, three or four little ones. But all of my lemons were huge and I squeeze them in their seeds and all. OK, like now look at how big that seed was, but I don't care. Folks just need to be looking when they eating. <laughs> um, now, next, I'm going to add some chicken stock. You can also add like beef broth if you want to, but you definitely should just add chicken stock. Some people use vegetable stock too, but I don't like to do that. Um, I'm going to add enough chicken stock just to cover it. Now, y'all, let me tell you, usually I wouldn't add chicken stock to this recipe at all. What I would normally do is have my potatoes seasoned just like that. I wouldn't add no liquid whatsoever except for my lemon juice. I would actually season my chicken and put my chicken on top of my potatoes in the same pan, cover it with foil, and then let it bake. And then all the juice and moisture from the chicken is what creates the moisture for the potatoes. Now, since they did not have the chicken I was looking for at Target, I had to make this everything separately, which is why I subbed it with the chicken stock. So... All you have to do is get your chicken stock going, get everything stirred in, and then I set my oven to 400 degrees. Originally, that's what I set the oven for, um, and then I'm just going to sit these in there for about an hour and let them cook. Now, the next thing I'm going to work with is my chicken. Um, usually, I would use chicken thighs for this, and I actually don't even like dark meat. I don't like chicken thighs whatsoever, but Target didn't even have that, y'all. They didn't have any chicken thighs, any chicken legs, so I'm using some chicken wings instead. Um, and that's why I did not put these over the potatoes because, you know, the chicken thighs and um, the legs have a lot more fat, and so they can give off a lot more juice, whereas chicken wings are not going to do that. And actually, they would get dry if I tried to cook them with the potatoes, you know, because my chicken wings would cook first so I'm making them separately putting a little bit of olive oil on top a little bit of seasoned salt as you can see and you guys know the other seasonings that I love to use parsley garlic powder onion powder paprika I'm so salty because my entire phone died um, and the video cut off and I didn't even realize that because I was sitting in front of the camera but um I'm going to show you guys the rest of the seasonings that I use. Now, all, out of all of these, you absolutely have to add the oregano in order for it to be um, Greek chicken. Now, that lemon pepper seasoning, you need to have that. Um, outside of that, I just added some onion powder and cayenne and black pepper, and that's it. So I put my chicken in the oven on the bottom shelf, also on 400 degrees, and I'm going to let that bake until it's cooked. In the interim, I'm going to be making a Greek pasta salad. Now, you can make this with regular pasta, but I am using orzo. Um, now, the last time I made this, I made the mistake of making the entire box of orzo pasta, y'all. It was my first time working with it. I had no clue what it was. Um, and as you can tell, <laughs> did nobody eat all that darn orzo? So now I'm just trying to sparingly add it in, stir it, see how much it is. And I only ended up adding about probably one and a half cups of orzo total. And you'll be able to see later that was actually a lot of pasta. So um, if you haven't cooked with this before, I would just say be careful. Um, but just follow it according to the cooking instructions. About nine minutes for it to be completely cooked. So my orzo pasta finished cooking and I did let it sit for about 30 minutes so it could cool off. Um, now all I'm doing is adding a little bit of olive oil to my pasta. That way I can just kind of break up all those clumps. Um, now you can also add olive oil as soon as you take it out of the pot. That would actually been a smart thing to do. But um, I'm struggling over here, y'all. So um, I added my olive oil. That way I can get those little clumps out. And now I'm going to go in with my English cucumber. Um, you can use regular cucumber, but I don't like all those seeds like if it's just for a salad i'll use a regular cucumber but i think i got a little bougie and now i don't even buy those no more <laughs> like i only buy um seedless cucumbers now so i'm using one whole seedless cucumber and you can leave all of the skin on or you can take it all off my mom hates it with the skin on tommy doesn't care and i just prefer it um half skin half skinless so i'm just gonna cut those into little cubes um you can cut it smaller than this if you'd like. Usually I would like dice it into little squares if that makes sense. But y'all, I was rushing. Um, like I said, it was late already. So I wasn't trying to go through no extra steps. 
Now, I wasn't sure if Tommy was going to eat this um, pasta salad or not, because sometimes he can be a little finicky with uh, what he eats. So I'm just going to leave a few of the cucumbers on the side for him, just in case he decides that he doesn't want to eat this, which ended up being the case. He did not want any. Um, now I'm just going to add some cherry tomatoes, and my knife was so bogus against them cherry tomatoes, so I had to go in there with a serrated knife. But, you know... Um, all of us generally like the same things. Tommy's a little bit more of a picky eater. He doesn't like any creamy sauces. And I think I told you guys this before. Uh, he doesn't like a lot of salad dressings. Like, I don't know how, but this man be eating straight lettuce leaves. Like, and tomatoes and stuff like that with nothing on it. I personally cannot do that. But he will eat a salad dry as heck. <laughs> so, he is, like, very finicky. Um... Sometimes he likes Italian salad dressing, sometimes he don't. So that's why I wanted to just leave him something off to the side. Um, now that I have my tomatoes in there, um, the next thing that I'm going to add is some red onion. And I think that red onion is way better than like, uh, like a sweet onion or a white or yellow onion when it comes to eating something raw. Now, I will eat like white onion on my tacos, but for like a salad, I always love to use red onion because I just feel like the flavor complements other fresh ingredients and it's not as strong as if you use like a white or a yellow raw onion. So I'm just going to dice this up really small. And this is just like a little short shortcut that I use versus, you know, cutting the ringlets and then cutting those. And I'm not adding a lot of onion, you guys. Like maybe two tablespoons of onion at the most. Because I still wasn't sure whether or not Tommy was going to eat this at the time. So I didn't want to add too much. And then um, I'm not a big fan of big booty chunks of onions in my stuff either. So I'm just going to put that in the baggie. And honestly, probably nobody going to ever use that red onion after today. <laughs> like, unless somebody else uses it for a salad, um, it's probably going to sit in the refrigerator for a minute. So I'm just cleaning up my little table. Um, Y'all know usually I would just uh, film this on the counter, but I was being lazy. So I was just sitting down at the table. Now, usually Kobe Jack cheese cubes do not go in a Greek salad. But I wanted to make this versatile. Everybody in my house does not like feta cheese. My mom says she didn't like feta cheese, but I've definitely seen her eat it before. <laughs> and I know Tommy, for a fact, does not like feta cheese. So I did want to add in a few Kobe Jack cubes. And I'm just trying to cut these a little bit smaller um, because Kobe Jack, like I said, doesn't usually go into Greek salad. So I didn't want to have a whole bunch in there. But if somebody wanted to eat the Kobe Jack pieces, they could fish around and get them. So it's up to you. If you want, you can replace that with uh, cheddar cubes or mozzarella cubes. If you don't like feta cheese, you could put whatever cheese you want in there. Or if you're cutting back from cheese, you could just not put any cheese at all. So now, um, I'm going to struggle with this feta container for like the next 10 minutes. <laughs> so I just edited that entire part out of the video. So I got my feta cheese added. Now the only seasonings that I added to this, you guys, was some parsley, a little bit of salt, not seasoned salt, just regular um, low sodium salt. And then I also added some black pepper. I added about two tablespoons of feta cheese and I added about a half a cup of Italian salad dressing. Now, if you want, you can use that Greek cucumber dressing instead, but nobody likes that but me. So I'm just going to add a little bit more Italian salad dressing. And of course, you want to just add that to taste. Um, if you add too much, it's going to be extremely soggy. So I just like to add a little bit in at a time. Now, on my own plate, uh, the next day, actually today, I did end up mixing in that Greek salad dressing with the salad. But um, if you don't think that anybody else is going to like it besides you, then just make it the traditional way with the Italian salad dressing. And really, the real traditional way is with the homemade vinaigrette. But y'all, we not going to do all that on a Tuesday. That's when I made this. We not doing that on a Tuesday, okay? <laughs> So use Italian salad dressing as a shortcut. And then I'm going to put a little bit more feta on top, a little bit more parsley just to make it look pretty. And we are done. It's a nice cold salad. It's really quick and easy. And it's not high in calories either. I want y'all to really just take a look at this chicken. Oh my God. You guys, this chicken was fire. Look at my salad. That looks amazing. And my Greek potatoes. The potatoes and the chicken, um, the potatoes were in the oven for about an hour and a half and the chicken was in the oven for an hour and it came out extremely juicy, crispy, just absolutely delicious, honestly.
Okay, y'all, so this is my little plate. I'm doing so bad by having two starches, but y'all, I did not care. I wanted some Greek salad and some Greek potatoes, and the chicken was literally falling off the bone. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any more recipes you want to see, please let me know, and I will see you guys in the next video.